Len Smith is a world champion, and like any international sportsman, he's dedicated to training. Right now, Len's got something on his mind. An important event will soon take place. He's preparing for another championship final. Lavatories have helped Len to hold a world championship longer than any other man alive. They're made out of porcelain, an essential tool of his sport. Len is a supervisor at a metal factory in the Sussex town of Crawley, and here he also prepares to defend his championship. Len lovingly hammers his piece of lavatory into shape. It must be as smooth and round as a ball bearing. Grinding down the toilet has taken years of training to perfect. Finally, it is a piece of lavatory no more. Len puts the finishing touches to what is now a marble. A marble in the hands of a champion who's better at playing with marbles than anyone else on earth. Len, who was born in Sheffield, has been playing marbles since he was a child more than 30 years ago. He has won the World Marbles Championship more times than anyone since marbling first came to Britain in the days of good Queen Bess. Len Smith lives near Tinsley Green by Gatwick Airport on the Surrey-Sussex border. And Tinsley Green is the centre of the entire marbling world. They come here from America, from Zambia, from Australia, from anywhere where there are marblers to see this. The Holy of Holies, a concrete circle where every year on Good Friday they hold the World Marbling Championships. Of course, the all-time greats once marbled here. People still talk of Pop Maynard, a grizzled ex-poacher with a thumb like a steel spring, who could split a pint pot at 15 paces. And of course, Sam Spooner once marbled here. Sam Spooner, the grand old man of marbling. There's even a plaque on the wall of the Greyhound pub beside the green to commemorate what Sam gave to marbles. Well, sadly, Sam has passed away. And this now is the age of Len Smith. It is being said in marbling circles that perhaps Len Smith could even be a better marbler than the legendary Sam. That perhaps Len Smith could be the greatest marbler who's ever lived. Len thoroughly agrees with this suggestion. Like Muhammad Ali, he's not unaware of his own ability. I mean, you're basically the sort of the Muhammad Ali, you're the Dennis Compton, the Stanley Matthews. Joe Davis, everyone, all of them, yes. Of marbles? Yes. I know I'm the greatest at, at marbles, and Cash knew that he was the greatest at boxing. But the only difference is I don't go uh, shouting it around like Cash did. Fourteen tankards adorn Len's mantelpiece, the prizes he won for scooping up the World Marbles Championship 14 times over the past 16 years. This, this is a sore point. Uh, we get, uh, you know, the tankards and things like that, but I think it's worth, worth more than this, really. I mean, do you reckon that, you know, if a world champion like you should be maybe earning the sort of money that maybe Muhammad Ali was being getting? Yes, I think people think I'm rolling in money anyway. You know, they see me occasionally on television and uh, the papers and they, they think, he's making a lot of money out of this. And uh, to be quite honest, we... Um, I don't make anything out of it. In fact, it costs me money to play. Do you reckon that though being the world marbles champion is the, is the same as being the world boxing champion, say? Not quite. Um, because of the money. Barely a minute of the day goes by that he can't be spotted quietly manipulating his marbles at home and at work in the metal factory lends a familiar figure twiddling away at his marbles in preparation for the championship matches he's dominated for so long. But like all international sportsmen, Len secretly worries in case he's over the top. Is there going to be a time, Len, when you're going to have to hang up your marbles for good? Um, well, let's, uh, let's look at um, Sam Spooner. He was in his 90s. Uh, Pop Maynard was in his 96 when he packed up. Today, we've been lucky enough to catch a brief glimpse of the world champion Len Smith actually limbering up in preparation for the world championships, along with a fellow member of his team, the Toucan Terribles, Mr. Charlie Dempsey. 
The big question going to be asked by the marbling correspondents of the world's press who will gather here on Good Friday, the World Championship Day, is whether or not the Toucan Terribles and Mr Len Smith can hang on to their World Championship. Of course, there's going to be a big challenge this year from other teams, like the Hookwood Horrors, the Rams, the Johnson Jets, and of course, the very up-and-coming Riss Flickers. All we can do now is just have a brief look for these exclusive pictures of the warm-up before the big game itself. On this match play form, the champ proves that his thumb and trigger finger are just as tough as ever. He's flicking and jabbing his marble, knocking the opposition clear from the ring. The Irish lad's clearly flagging under the murderous onslaught as Len demonstrates just how a marble should be used. He's mastered the topside flick, the screwback and the cannon. He cuts away at the opposition as Demps is obviously outclassed by this crawly marbling wonder. This looks like the last shot of the game. It is, and once again, Len Smith proves that he's got what it takes. Of course, it was only a few weeks ago that another of the all-time greats, one Mohammed Ali, was soundly knocked off his perch. And we do hear whispers that one of the challengers, the wrist flickers, have got a secret weapon, a flicker with a new technique that could beat Len. We'll just have to wait until Good Friday now to see whether Len Smith who's more famous now than even the legendary Sam Spooner, is still the greatest thing to ever hit the marbling world.